Hello and welcome to the Renaissance English History Podcast, a part of the Agora Podcast Network. I am your host, Heather Tesco. I'm a storyteller who makes history accessible because I believe it's a pathway to understanding who we are, our place in the universe, and being more deeply in touch with our own humanity. In this episode, we're going to think about getting a job in the Tudor court and talk about the various people and roles that kept the court running. Before we get started, though, your reminder about TudorCon. So you guys, it's like four and a half months away now. And if you want to come, now is the time to get your ticket. And I say that for a couple of reasons. First, I'm going to stop the payment plans after May because I need to have received all of the payments by the time TudorCon happens. So I'm stopping the payment plans. Uh, the last time you can buy a ticket with a payment plan will be in May. Um, and then you can pay over the course of four months so you can spread it out. And also you got to start planning your trip. So now's the time. It is three days, September 8th, 9th, and 10th of learning, feasting, new friendships. It's a, it's still small. It's a small, intimate gathering. I mean, there's about a hundred people or so. Um, so you get to meet new people, people who love the tutors as much as you do. And you get to learn from best selling authors and bloggers. We have parties with period entertainment. We have feasts. It's just awesome. So you can learn more at englandcast.com slash tutorcon and you can get your tickets there. And yes, for those of you who are wondering, I am going to do the digital only ticket as well. And after I finalize a couple more things with that, I will release that information. So you can stay tuned for that if you really can't travel to Pennsylvania. But hopefully we will see you in person as well. Englandcast.com slash TudorCon for all of the details. So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the unsung heroes of the Tudor court, the people who kept it running smoothly behind the scenes. While the higher level courtiers often grab the spotlight, it's the cooks, cleaners, gardeners, and other servants who truly made the royal court function. We will explore the job descriptions and the daily tasks of these essential workers, shedding light on the lives of the hardworking individuals who were instrumental to the success of the Tudor dynasty. So let's dive in and discover these lesser known stories of the people who made the royal court tick. Let's start with the cooks who played the crucial role of keeping the court well fed. Preparing meals for the Tudor court was no small task as banquets and feasts were elaborate affairs that required extensive planning and precise execution. Cooks in the royal kitchen would be responsible for a wide range of duties, from sourcing ingredients to preparing complex dishes that showcased the wealth and status of the people hosting the monarchy. Cooks would typically be divided into various roles, each with its own area of expertise. The master cook would oversee the entire kitchen operation, ensuring that all of the dishes were prepared to perfection and served in a timely manner. Under the master cook, there would be a team of specialized cooks, such as a pastry cook, a roasting cook, and the saucier. Each of these roles required specific skills and knowledge to excel in their respective duties. To become a cook in the royal court, one usually started as an apprentice under an experienced master cook, learning the trade from a young age. These apprenticeships could last several years, during which the apprentice would gain hands-on experiences and develop their culinary knowledge and techniques. After completing their apprenticeship, the individual would be considered a skilled cook, ready to take on a role within a noble household or the royal court itself. Once employed at the court, a cook would typically start in a more junior position, assisting in the preparation and cooking of dishes under the supervision of the master cook. Through hard work and dedication and the ability to demonstrate their culinary prowess, these cooks could advance within the kitchen hierarchy. They might progress to roles such as the second cook or eventually the master cook, who was in charge of the entire kitchen operation and responsible for planning and overseeing the preparation of all meals. The cooks at the Tudor court were highly skilled in a wide range of culinary techniques, including roasting, baking, boiling, and frying. They were also adept at using a variety of ingredients, from exotic spices and herbs to fresh fruits and vegetables, 
which they combined to create dishes that not only tasted delicious, but were also visually stunning. In addition to their culinary skills, the cooks at the Tudor court needed to have a keen understanding of the dietary and medicinal beliefs of the time. They were expected to create meals that adhered to the humoral theory, which was, of course, the prevailing medical concept of the era. This meant balancing the four humors, blood, phlegm, black bile, and yellow bile, through the consumption of specific foods. Cooks would incorporate the ingredients that were believed to have particular properties, such as warming, cooling, moistening, or drying, to ensure that the meals they prepared were not only delicious, but also promoted good health. These culinary maestros were responsible for preparing and serving the extravagant feasts enjoyed by the nobility and their guests, which showcased not only their culinary skills, but also their creativity and resourcefulness. Now let's turn our attention to the unsung heroes of the Tudor court, the cleaners. It's hard to even imagine the monumental task of keeping a royal palace clean and sanitary, especially considering the lack of modern conveniences that we take for granted today. However, the cleaners were an indispensable part of court life, ensuring that the palace remained a pleasant and healthy environment for its inhabitants. Becoming a cleaner at the royal court typically involved entering into service at a young age, often as a page or apprentice. Young boys and girls would usually start their careers as general household servants, carrying out tasks like fetching water, stoking fires, and washing dishes. With time and experience, they could then move on to more specialized cleaning roles. One such role was the grooms of the chamber, who were responsible for cleaning and maintaining the monarch's private apartments. This was a highly coveted position, of course, as it allowed for close contact with the king or queen and the possibility of catching their eye and earning favors. Grooms of the chamber would be responsible for tasks like making the royal bed, cleaning the royal clothes, and emptying chamber pots. Another important role was that of laundress, who would be in charge of washing the vast quantities of linen used throughout the palace. This was no small task, as the Tudor court was known for its love of extravagant clothing and fine linens. The laundress would work in a team with other laundry staff to wash, dry, and press the clothing, bedsheets, and other fabrics used by the royal household. Cleaners in the Tudor court were also responsible for the more labor-intensive tasks, like sweeping and scrubbing the floors and walls, and cleaning the palace's numerous fireplaces. This would often involve working with harsh chemicals like lye and even urine to remove stubborn stains and dirt. In addition, they would be tasked with removing the waste from the palace, including emptying the chamber pots and disposing of the contents in a designated area away from the living quarters. As with other roles within the royal court, there was potential for advancement for those who proved themselves to be hardworking and reliable. A cleaner could potentially rise through the ranks to become a yeoman or even a gentleman usher, overseeing a team of servants and enjoying a more comfortable lifestyle. The cleaners of the Tudor court played a vital role in maintaining the cleanliness and orderliness of the royal household. Let's now talk about the world of the gardeners, the skilled laborers responsible for tending to the majestic gardens of the court. These gardens were not only a source of beauty and tranquility for the court, but also served as a symbol of the monarchy's power and wealth. The job of a gardener was both an art and a science requiring knowledge of horticulture, landscape design, and the ability to execute complex tasks to maintain the garden's splendor. Similar to other court roles, individuals often began their gardening careers at a young age, entering into service as apprentices to more experienced gardeners. They would learn the craft through hands-on experience, acquiring knowledge about plant care, soil management, and the cultivation of fruit and vegetable gardens to supply the court's kitchens. As their skills and experience grew, a gardener might specialize in a particular area, such as the care of ornamental plants, fruit trees, or even the design and maintenance of intricate garden features like mazes, fountains, and sculptures. These specialized roles would often come with increased responsibility and prestige. One highly sought-after position was that of the master gardener, who would oversee the entire team of gardeners and report directly to the king or the queen. The master gardener was responsible for the overall design and layout of the gardens, 
ensuring that they were not only visually stunning, but also functional and productive. This role was highly regarded and a skilled master gardener would have a great deal of influence within the court. In addition to their practical duties, gardeners in the Tudor court played a role in the social life of the palace. They would often be called upon to assist in the preparation and execution of elaborate outdoor events like banquets, masks, and pageants. This might involve the creation of temporary garden structures, the decoration of outdoor spaces with flowers and greenery, or even the preparation of plants for use in medicinal remedies or cosmetics. The gardeners of the Tudor court were highly skilled professionals who played a crucial role in maintaining the beauty and functionality of the royal gardens. Their work not only provided sustenance for the court, but also contributed to the overall prestige of the monarchy. As with other roles, there was potential for advancement for those who demonstrated talent, dedication, and a keen eye for the aesthetic. Time to talk about another essential group of workers in the Tudor court, the grooms and stable workers. These individuals were responsible for the care and management of the horses and the stables, which played a vital role in transportation, communication, and even leisure activities for the royal court. The work of the grooms and stable workers was highly specialized and required a great deal of knowledge, skill, and dedication. Starting their careers as young apprentices, grooms and stable workers would learn the ropes under the tutelage of more experienced stable masters. They would gain valuable knowledge about the care and management of horses, including feeding, grooming, and exercise routines, as well as the maintenance of stables themselves. Additionally, they would learn about the specific needs of the different breeds of horses used in the royal court, from powerful war horses to elegant riding horses for hunting and leisure. One important role within the stables was the farrier, the specialist responsible for the care and maintenance of the horse's hooves. The farrier would need to have a deep understanding of equine anatomy and be skilled in the art of shoeing horses, as well as treating hoof-related injuries and illnesses. This highly specialized role was essential to the health and well-being of the royal horses and was highly regarded within the stable hierarchy. Another key role was that of master of the horse, who held a high-ranking position in the royal household. The master of the horse was responsible for overseeing all aspects of the royal stables, including the care of the horses, the maintenance of the stables, the management of the staff. They would also be responsible for selecting and training the horses used by the king or queen and their entourage, as well as organizing and overseeing equestrian events such as hunts and tournaments. In fact, the master of the horse was such an important role This was the role first given to Robert Dudley when Elizabeth I became queen, her favorite, the Earl of Leicester. She promoted him to master of the horse. The work of the grooms and stable workers extended beyond the day-to-day care of the horses as they were often called upon to assist in important court events and ceremonies. This might involve leading a procession of horses in a royal entry or a pageant, or ensuring that the king or queen's horse was appropriately outfitted and prepared for a public appearance. So the grooms and stable workers were an integral member of the Tudor court, responsible for the care and management of one of the most important assets of the monarchy, the royal horses. Their expertise and dedication ensured that the horses were healthy, well-trained, and prepared for any task, whether it was transportation, communication, or leisure. As with other roles in the royal household, there was the potential for advancement for those who demonstrated skill and commitment and made the stables a dynamic and essential part of life in the Tudor court. We touched on laundresses before, but let's explore the often overlooked role of the laundry workers at the court. They were responsible for cleaning and care of the court's vast quantities of clothing, linen, and textiles. And they played an essential part in maintaining the appearance and hygiene of the royal household. Their knowledge involved having a deep understanding of different fabrics and materials, as well as the appropriate methods for cleaning, drying, and pressing each item. They also needed to become proficient in various laundry techniques, including natural detergents, stain removal, and fabric repair. One of the key roles within the laundry was that of laundress or laundry maid who would be responsible for the actual washing of the clothes and linens. This was a physically demanding job involving long hours spent scrubbing, wringing, and rinsing items by hand. 
Despite the hard work, experienced laundresses were highly sought after as their skill and knowledge could make a significant difference in the appearance and longevity of the court's valuable clothing and textiles. Another important role was that of laundry steward, who would oversee the operation of the laundry department and manage the staff. The laundry steward would be responsible for ensuring that all of the items were clean to the highest standard and that the laundry was running efficiently and effectively. This role required excellent organizational and management skills, as well as a keen eye for detail. And laundry workers, of course, were very important in maintaining the health and hygiene of the court. Regular cleaning of clothing and linens helped to prevent the spread of disease and illnesses. This was especially important during times of plague or other epidemics like the sweating sickness, when the cleanliness of the court's surroundings could be a matter of life or death. In addition to their practical duties, the laundry workers would also be involved in preparations for important court events and ceremonies. This might involve ensuring that the royal family and their guests had a constant supply of fresh clothing and linens, or even the creation of elaborate displays using laundered items such as the presentation of the royal bedchamber. The laundry workers of the Tudor court were skilled professionals who played a vital role in maintaining the appearance, health, and hygiene of the household. They ensured that the court was always well-dressed and well-presented, and their dedication and hard work contributed to the overall smooth functioning of the court. As we've seen, the court workers of the Tudor era were essential in keeping the royal household running smoothly and efficiently. From cooks, cleaners, and gardeners to grooms and stable workers and laundry staff, each of these individuals played a crucial role in maintaining the appearance, health, and overall well-being of the court. Although their jobs were often labor-intensive and challenging, their skills and expertise were highly valued and respected. It's important to remember that the grandeur and splendor of the court would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of these hardworking men and women. Their dedication and commitment to their work have left a mark on history, and their stories deserve to be remembered and celebrated. So we're going to stop it here, hop into the Tudor Learning Circle at tutorlearningcircle.com, a social network just for Tudor fans to discuss this and all things Tudor. Remember to learn more about TudorCon and reserve your spot for September 8th through 10th at englandcast.com slash TudorCon. And hey, one other note, are you ever on YouTube? Because I have a YouTube channel and I post all kinds of extra content there on everything from Tudor scandals to history's mysteries, um, lots of cool stuff that just goes on my YouTube channel. So head on over to YouTube. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, You can also just search for H Tesco. That's me or for Heather Tesco. You'll find me. Um, It's the channel is called Coffee and History because I often talk about history when I'm caffeinated. So you can check that out and hit subscribe to get all kinds of fun extra content. I post a video almost every day. Um, So there's extra content over there if you want to go check that out. All right. Thank you for listening. I will be back in a couple of weeks. Have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will talk with you soon. Blow, northern wind, a sandful may be sweating. Blow, northern wind, blow, blow, blow. I caught a board in bow a breach that solely Sam leaves on seat. Men's cool maiden of me, fair and frail to fond. In all this world, we shall wander the blow.